Alright fuckers, welcome back to the Hearts Career Mode here on Football Manager 2017 is episode 2 of season 2 and after a bad start in the friendlies, we we'll bounced back a wee bit after 3 defeats in a row, we managed to beat our uh, junior affiliated club Airdrie, we got a draw at home against Wacom which was a decent result and then in the Betfred Cup we won 3 games in a row with wins coming against Elgin City, Peterhead and Dunfermline so we're Guaranteed to get into the next round, we just have one game left against East, uh, East Fife who are currently top of the group I think, or joint top of us, but I mean it's just, we're through anyway like, so it's, more, it's going to basically be a friendly, but today it's going to be kicking off the Ladbrokes Premiership 2017-2018 season against Dundee, Dundee were brilliant last season man, finished second in the league so I don't know if they're going to be able to repeat that this year though because uh, I think there's a few teams that are going to definitely be above them. Aberdeen I think will be stronger this year, they've made some signings, Rangers will be stronger. I'm hoping we'll be stronger even though we've done very very little in the transfer market. But one team I know for sure will be stronger and a fucking lot stronger, I mean like steroid stronger, one team that's been pumping the juices right into them is Mullerwell. And we'll cover Mullerwell in a little moment. But yeah, you can just see there's the bet Fed Cup there. So East Pfeiffer, wait, how the fuck are they on eight points? Oh, penalty win? Oh, right, yeah, cool, I get it. I forgot that I forgot this whole penalty win thing. I don't know what I think about that feature. It's all, it's all right, like, I mean, there's something different into it, so. Yeah, that's what it is, guys, but uh, we're going to go through in that. I can't be caught now. But, yeah, so let's have a quick look at the transfers. I'm not going to go through every single transfer because this window's not over yet, so it would be kind of pointless, but. Just have a look at some of the main transfers. Now look at this. The total net spend is actually more than the amount received, which is not very common in Scottish football. I mean, normally, no, I mean, there's not much money in Scottish football, so you're used to uh, clubs selling more than they buy, but that is not the case here. And look at this, Mullerell. Highest fee, 3.8, what the fuck, 3.8 million. Net spend, 8 million. Let's go check them out. Like I said last time, it brought in John McGinn for Hibernian, 1.3. Cummins for Hibernian, over 600k. They got Mehmet, they got uh, Donahue, they brought in Anthony Stokes for a couple of hundred k for Blackburn. A couple of lone players. And look at this, Ben Pearson for fucking Preston. Ben bloody Pearson, whoever he is. 3.8 million, potentially rising to 5.25. And then Miles Kenlick from Ipswich, 1.8. I mean, look at these signings. And they signed Louis Moult to a three-year deal, so I like. I'm not saying they're going to be competing for the league, but surely with those signings, you'd expect Mullerwell to at least minimum finish in the top six this season. And I mean, if they can repeat this kind of, see if they can like do anything similar to this in January, and then at the start of next season, like why can't they challenge Celtic? I think that I think they I think they'll be the closest threat to Celtic in the next in the next couple of years. I mean. I don't see Aberdeen closing the gap. I don't see Rangers closing the gap. But at this rate, the way Mullerwell's going, you know, fuck, who knows that they won't have a team capable by the start of next season. Don't think they'll be able to challenge or do anything in terms of winning the title this season, but I think they should definitely be uh, looking for a top six. And who knows, maybe they could even get into a European place or try and finish second. But next season, man, next season is, could definitely be the season for Mullerwell. Uh, other Celtic have spent a wee bit of money. You see, a uh, seven point five total. In terms of players, they've sold or got rid of. It's just basically a bunch of free transfers. They have lost to uh, F.A. Ambrose and uh, Isa Gouy. Loaned it Christopher Adger, Calvin Miller as well. Leo Fazin on a free. They've loaned it Jack Aitchington to Partick Thistle. And this look at two point three million for Stefan Swage. Uh, 1.9 for Bafalemi, 1.5 for Stelanio Philip. Uh, they've brought in Dalby, Rob Holding on loan from Arsenal, which will be a good signing, and Bruno Farella for Setabul from uh, Portugal. So, I mean, a good bunch of signings there for Celtic. Uh, Aberdeen, 
brought in a few players, two players for Falkirk, Greg Sabal and Peter Grant. Uh, I don't know, they could be decent players. I'll be honest, I don't really know who they are, but they're young, they've got potential, so, I mean, that's the main thing. Aberdeen keeping their Scottish core, and they brought in Stephen Sugal from Sheffield United on a free, which I think was a good signing. Lewis Coyle on a loan, Josh Clark and Pedro Chilerfella for Liverpool. He's valued at 2.6, so he must be a decent wee player. Anybody else catching my here, Dundee? If not, really... Well, they've brought in a few players, like, so, I mean, can they build on that set? I mean, I don't think so. I don't think, I think they could, I think another top six finish would be a good result for Dundee this season. Uh, you've, got, you've got Dundee United. Um, they've not really done a lot of business. I don't know if they've been able to stay up. You've got Hamilton. Not done much. They have sold Ali Crawford. That could, uh, could, that could be a big blow for them. Who knows how they'll get on without him. There's us, look at that. we brought in Stephen Whitaker on a free, and that is it. We did sell Andras Struna to Estoril for 400k. Uh, he was a good player, he was very versatile, he could play a, a bunch of different positions, but he w the, the problem with uh, Struna was he wasn't the best player we had in any of those positions that he can play, and each position he can play, we did have a decent um, depth there, so I thought, He's a good player, but he's just going to be a rotation player. And albeit we can rotate him in a lot of positions, I'd rather try and cash in, get a bit of money for him, and hopefully, I don't know, maybe if we're allowed by the board, we can spend some of that money and try and invest in a position that we, we haven't got as much depth in. So that was my thinking behind that, Ian. Uh, and for this, I brought in some players, all low knees and freeze. Obviously, as you know, Mullerwell, Patrick Thistle. I think, I think Patrick Thistle have done very good business. Um, I'd say... Probably the second best in the league, obviously, apart from Mullerwell. Did sell Ryan Edwards to Rangers for 475k. But they brought in Liam Burton on loan. Adam Frizzle on loan for West Brom, who I think they signed for Kamarnock. They signed Rory McKenzie from Kamarnock, got re relegated. And Jack Aitchinson, who I'm pretty sure is going to be a wonder kid in this game. They've got him on loan as well. So, good signings there for Partick Fizzle. One last thing, before we get stuck into the opening game of the season, we're going to check how Scottish teams have got on in Europe. And unlike real life, there's actually a bit of good news for once. So, uh, we'll start off with, we'll start off with Dundee, uh, the team that finished second. So, they see, they safely got through the first round. 6-0 aggregate win over B68. Who the fuck are B68? I don't know, but... At least he got through the first round, and that will help the coefficient a little bit. Unfortunately, they got drawn against FC Red Bull Salzburg in the next leg, and they went out. But they only lost two one on aggregate. No, it doesn't. You can't complain about that, man. That's very respectable scoreline. And uh, I'm pretty sure if they could have got an easier draw, they might have went through. But it is what it is, man. I mean, Red Bull Salzburg, good team. Dundee, I think, did well to only lose two one. Aberdeen the same in the first leg. They got a comfortable win over Chirac. 8-0 aggregate. Then they were drawn against KR. I believe they're an Icelandic team in the second round. And they got another 4-0 comfortable uh, aggregate scoreline. And unfortunately in the third round they were drawn against Losk Lille. So Lille, as we know, French champions not that long ago. Very diff difficult team, but Aberdeen, they only lost the away leg 2-1, so now they bring Lille back to Pataudry. And uh, what a great opportunity that is for Aberdeen. A 1-0 win at home, a 1-0 win at Pataudry would take them through, so Aberdeen against Lille, great chance for Aberdeen to make it into the playoffs. And for Rangers, again, like Dundee and Aberdeen, nice, uh, comfortable Passage through the first round against Fola Esk, 6 0 in aggregate. They were um, pretty fortunate as well in the second round. They came up against Strom Godset, beat them 4 0. And then in the third qualifying round, uh, they came up against Real San Sebastian. And unfortunately, at Ibrox, they lost 2 1. They can still turn things around in the um, away leg, but it's going to be difficult. But Real San Sebastian, I mean, Apparently they're in the first fucking league. I didn't know that. They're in this. Oh my god, look at that. They've got a bunch of... Holy shit. 
Who the hell is this team? Is that Real? I don't know. But fuck me, this team's actually good. So, uh, <laughs> who knows? Um, I thought Rangers might have been able to go through, but perhaps not. But anyway, I think even if Aberdeen and Rangers go to this stage, it's still been pretty successful for uh, Scotland and Europe. We'll check just how, see, let's see how Celtic got on. Oh, we'll go to the schedule, man. It's a lot quicker if we go that way. Celtic, first round against, no, second round, they're going to second round, sorry, against Dundalk. 6-1-1 uh, in aggregate, that was good. And then the qualify, oh my god, look at this, they're 5-1 up against Sharinsky. H H S K Sharinsky Monster. So, should definitely finish the tie at the home leg, man. So, it looks like Celtic are going to be in the playoffs with a good chance to make it into the Champions League. Which is great, that's what we want the Scottish teams to be, so more if Celtic get into the Champions League, that will be brilliant. But anyway, enough about Celtic, enough about the other teams, it's time for Hearts and it is time for the opening game of the season. Now, um, in the Betfred Cup, I was uh, experimenting a lot. I think I gave every available fit person at least one game. But now it's time to decide my best team for the season, and we do have a couple of injuries, like so we'll have to navigate our way around them um, people some people still not fully fit but we, we definitely want Jamie Walker I think Billy King might start I think Billy King's going to start because Sam Nicholson currently unavailable and I don't quite know so we want we'll play Sutar and uh, Chalice can come in as you do. Uh, anyone else here going to go? We've got Tony Gallagher who wants to play, so I have to kind of. Did we start him over Reras? I don't quite know. Is he at that level? So is so worth a place in the team? Dushan Whitaker, not Callum Patterson, will be starting. Uh, even though Whitaker has been pretty decent for us. Uh, so, do, do we really need all these defenders? Probably not. Uh, we'll give, who do we got to give? Riley or Salmon? Riley or Salmon? Um, give Gavin Riley a wee chance. Put him on the bench. And uh, I think I'll do it. I'll probably be the team. Do we go with Tony Gallagher or do we go with Red Ass though? Red Ass is on an 8.1, so I think we've got to go with him. Callum Parsons sitting on a 6.3, that is not good, man. But that's going to be our team for the opening game of the season. Hamilton, Patterson, Avalini, Asuta, Reras, Jalice, Dushum, Ketchum, Walker, Johnson and King. Basically, it's more or less a full-strength team for last season, only we've got Billy King out wide instead of Sam Nicholson. So let's get stuck in and see if we got off to a positive start. I would take a draw against Dundee, I'm not going to lie. I would um, maybe call me a negative bastard, but a draw against Dundee, I think, in the opening game of the season would be pretty decent. So uh, surprisingly, we're actually favourites with the bookmakers. Matt Baker from BBC Sport Fix it's going to be a draw. But yeah, I thought after Dundee's impressive season last year and at home, and the fact we've not made many signings, I thought they would have might have been favourites, but it doesn't really matter who predicts who's going to be favourites. It matters what you do in the pitch, and hopefully we can get the job done. So you'll see the Dundee team, Scott Bain, Kerr, Exa Banguren, Darren Odea, Oceana, Clock, Ali, Whiten, Finsett, Fernandez, and loan signing from Aberdeen, J. Stockley. Decent team Dundee's got. But I'm really looking forward to see how Mullerwell performed this season, man. Mullerwell, they're just going to be a major threat to everybody in the league, I think, apart from Celtic. It's difficult because we want to get into the you know the top three, those guaranteed European places, and it's difficult enough when you've got Celtic, Aberdeen and Rangers, then any other team that might have a decent season. Now you're going to add in uh, Mullerwell, who <laughs> a decent season for them is going to be, just to be, they're probably going to be in the same bracket as Aberdeen and Rangers, so it's going to be very hard for us to... It's going to be very difficult, man, for us to um, get into those places, but we have to believe 
not very professional guys, but I am eating my breakfast during this vid, so I mean, it is what it is. Fed was probably shite and ruined before I started eating anyway, so. You know what I mean? And there you go, there's the reigning champions. Currently just scored a goal against Ross County, so they're top of the league. <laughs> Is this going to be a sign of things to come? Motherwell just took the lead through a new signing, John McGinn. And, um, good start for him in his uh, Motherwell career. Jaliso to Billy King, Billy King! Into Johnson, straight into the hands of Scott Bain. Fuck, what a chance. Had to do better there. We're kind of fortunate to get the ball that far up the pitch. I mean, the pass to Billy King was off. He somehow managed to get away with it, but didn't make the most of the opportunity. And now it's Craig Whiten into Stockley, and that's a goal for fuck's sake. Jaden Stockley. Fourth goal of the season. And uh, not a great start for his man. 1 0 down as we approach half time. Celtic now go 2 0 up against Ross County. A goal from Musa Dembele. Billy King's just been caught offside for Hearts. And uh, come on, he do something here. Performance has not been good enough. I expect a much better showing in the second half. Everyone just got fired up apart from Johnson, so hopefully that helps. Uh, will we see any changes really in the second half from the players? Well, I hope so. Come on, don't I? You never want to lose your first game. It doesn't matter who it's against. Such a negative, fucking disappointing start to the season when you lose. And I think we'll be taking Bon Johnson off. It's just, his rating's pretty poor, 6.3. He's not playing well at all. Patterson, he can, he can whip these long throws in, it is him, oh it's headed away though, back to Patterson. Come Callum, hit it, hit it son, oh, saved by Vane. It was always good, for that angle man, it was always going to be difficult, but good uh, good play for Patterson, he made a decent run, got the shot away, Walker now whipping it in, it's headed away for Stockley this time, picked up by Patterson again. And that's the end of the highlight, unfortunately. And Graham Cummings is equalised for St. Johnston, so uh, maybe Mullerwell's fairy tale start to the season is not going to be as planned. And this is game's not going as planned, so it's about time we take up Born Johnson. He's just not doing enough, I don't think, to justify staying on the pitch much longer. His body language apparently is looking furious. Well, he's going to be even more furious in a minute because we're going to be bringing on Gavin Riley. <laughs> fuck man, got the cold guys, fuck, this is shite. If you want professional uh, games and professional commentary and shit, don't come to this channel, you get some fat cunt eating his breakfast and sneezing, like fuck, so you'll be warned. Anyone else to bring on, I don't know. I think we'll, we'll leave it with Gavin Riley for now and we'll see if he can do, any, do anything. Looks like Mullerwell have took the lead again. We're going to go attack, attack in here. Try and make something happen. And who's got Mullerwell second? It is Cummins. So the, the, new two, the two new hip signings are working well together to give uh, Mullerwell the lead. Hamilton have just went in front against Dundee United. Um, we're going to take off Perry Kitchen. He's pretty knackered there. We'll bring on Don Kerry and... Uh, one more, we'll bring on, bring on Eastmall, I think, for Billy King. Billy King, 64%, a bit tired there. Throw in now for Dundee. No, if we actually have rewind it, it's no fucking throwing. Muppet. Mark Clock now received a booking.
Not a lot's happening, right? Oh, and Graham Cunningham has equalised again for St. Johnston, so Miller will have been pegged back a second time today. Don Kirby wins the header down Eastma. Can he go it away? He's tried to beat Oshuana, but the heart, former Hearts man just pulls him. Bolaxes him, man. Gets the ball. It's White now to Stockley. Dundee looking to counter. A goal here would surely bury it, but Eastma picks up again. This time it to Parson and to Kirby. Nice play here for Aberdeen. It's Gavin Riley. Gavin Riley. Oh, man. He shoots straight at Scott Bain. Disappointing. Fucking disappointing as fuck. Come on, he should have done better there. I mean, what, a, what an opportunity that was to make it 1-1. And now with two minutes to go, it looks like it is going to be a defeat here. 15 seconds to go. Look, oh my god, Graham Cummings completes the hat trick. So Mullerwell, after all these signings, have spent 8 million and got beat in the opening game of this season. Who would have thought that? What a crazy result. Crazy result indeed. Uh, we need to tell the team that was disappointing because it was not good at all. Not happy with your performance out there. Very, very disappointing to lose that 9-11 in shots. It is what it is. <laughs> but yeah, that was that was pretty bad. We do have the Betfred Cup second round draw coming up. Oh, so let's have, we've got some uh, emails. Yep, Dundee win the battle at Dens Park. Um, I'm not interested. I don't. F we'll send the assistant manager. I don't want to get into a heated debate with Paul Hartley. I like the guy. Uh... Luca, we do not want this guy, or do we want him? I don't know. Um, no, I don't think we're too interested in him. Rafe, uh, got this Chris Johnson guy. I mean, we could put in a could put in a wee sneaky bid for Chris Johnson. Apparently, it would be a good signing. I mean, we could make it happen. What do you think? This Gasparotto guy as well. Would he be a good signing? Currently has no interest in joining. You know what? Well, I'm going to put in a wee bid for this Chris Johnson dude. Don't want to pay 180k though. I'll pay 120. That's more my uh, 230. Um, I just don't know if I need him that much. I don't know if we need a winger like that. So apparently Mullerwell's interested. Mullerwell's buying every cunt at the moment. Uh, Chris Johnson, do we really do we need him? Um, I'm going to say no, I don't think he's the kind of player that we need to be spending money on. Like Gary Mackay Stevens, um, I've tried to put a bid in for him, apparently he's transfer listed, and we will definitely try and sign this kid, 230k. I'd love to add Gary Mackay Stevens to the team. We're going to scout the player, I mean, probably should have done that before, but definitely we would take him. If we can uh, get him. Now let's see how much money he wants. Fuck's sake. Straight away I don't even think we're going to be able to afford him. Just these uh, wages don't don't look promising. We've got no fucking money. The board's abs the board are being ridiculous. I see the lack of money the board have offered us. Like, uh, we're going to have to walk away just due to the fact we actually cannot afford the guy. Uh, I would have really liked, I mean, can, maybe we can try and get him on loan, I'll, I'll try that instead, but in terms of us just outright buying him, they would require a playing wage contribution of 100, well, we can't afford it. Like, what can you, see, being the Hearts manager fucking sucks, man, there's just no funds available, it's a joke, absolute joke. Uh, right, well, you know what, I'll, I'll try and work the magic, guys, in the transfer window, for uh, the next episode, which I think will be against, I think we're going to come back for a game against Celtic. Yeah, we will. So we've got East Fife in the Betfred Cup. Then we have Hamilton and St Johnston. And then we're going to come back for that home tie against Celtic. So, I mean, you'd expect Celtic to beat us. So, I think minimum, I think we need four points at the next two games, man. We don't want to pick up anything less than that. So, if we can get four points at the next two games, then let's say we do lose to Celtic. We'll have four out of a possible twelve. It won't be great, but you know, at the same time, it won't be really be disastrous. And we'll have had a a fairly, a relatively, uh, fairly hard start to the season. So that's it, guys. We will find out who we get in the next round of the Betfred Cup, and uh, hopefully, 
we can transfer in that competition. And hopefully the board start giving us a bit more money. But who knows, I might actually have to sell a couple more players if I want to bring anybody in, guys. But that's been it for this episode. Uh, episode 2 of Season 2. And thanks for watching, guys. Leave your comments down below. Who do you want me to try and sign in? What do you, what do you think is going to be the, the... Give me your top 6. Who do you think is going to be the top 6 this season in order? I think Mullerwell will they will come good after that disappointing defeat in the opening day. They couldn't afford a Graham Cummins hat trick, but who knows how they got on the rest of the season. Will they be able to challenge the likes of Aberdeen and Rangers for second place? Let me know down below. Will we be able to get into Europe this time around? Let me know down below. And can anyone even get close to Celtic? Of course, let me know down below. And until next time, it's on a Scotland 90. Peace.